Happy Christmas, everyone. Somehow I never opened it. I still can't believe it. Got my own disc. Open it up. I do wonder if Kate Beckinsale's in here. Shouldn't have done that. Car wouldn't start, so I hired a nice lover. Welcome. Oh, hello, Chip Tippers. Sorry, just checking my faxes. And welcome back to my childhood bedroom recreation. This was my Commodore 64C recreation that we did in that one video. And that is my Apple IIe recreation that we did at the same time. And that video remains a favorite of you guys. And it's one of my favorites as well. But I have a confession to make. It's something we're going to put right right now and have a lot of fun doing it. I got something completely backwards. Now, a lot of things in this setup are original. This is my actual TV that I had in my bedroom when I was about 12, connected to my Commodore 64C, but I couldn't find the actual desk. So I bought the closest match that I could find to it that's on the market today. Uh, I remember the desk having three or four drawers, definitely had a long drawer up the top here, and it had these kind of old fashioned knobs. Um, and it's logical to conclude that the drawers were on the right here because most people are right-handed. So when you're working, you reach to the... Well, turns out I was wrong, which explains why this never quite felt right. When I was setting this up, I didn't have the same feelings that I had with the Apple IIe, where I was like, yeah, that went there, that went there. Instead, I couldn't remember the tape deck being so squished in on the left and various other things. But then I was going through old home movies filmed on this my family's original Sony Handycam vision. And I saw a little glimpse of that desk. And as you can see, the drawers are on the left, which is really weird until I remember my dad was left-handed. So I think it's very likely that he bought that desk that led me to thinking, well, if that was in my bedroom there, well, where did it go? So then so I then thought, I thought, thought. now I kept an apartment in London, which I now rent out. And I wondered, that was always my desk. Could I have moved it in there when I used to live in that apartment? I didn't want to bother the tenants with like, hey, I'm trying to make this video about Commodore 64. But what I did think of was, well, the Lettings Company do these inventories every year. And they take photos. So I scoured through the inventories and I found this. <laughs> yes, it's there. It still exists. I still own it, even better. And of course, the drawers are on the left, right? Right. So what we're going to do is ship it all the way from the UK to here in the good old USNA. And in the process, I'm going to ship over a whole load of other stuff that I had probably in my drawers. You know what I mean? Uh, we can have fun exploring as well. Um, all sorts of stuff from the 80s. But we're also going to have a bit of fun exploring a famous story for those regulars of this channel involving, where is it? This. This is my copy of Ghostbusters. And let me let Perifractic of the past explain what happened with this. Thank you. I really wanted this for Christmas. I think I was 11 or 12. I never wanted anything more. I opened it up on Christmas Day, tried to load it, and it kept getting stuck at the final flashing, uh, you know, decompression stripes. I was trying to align the heads, I cleaned the heads. Instead, I played with my bike because I couldn't get it to work. Of course, Boxing Day, Smith's was closed. So I had to wait two whole days. Finally took it back to Smith's. Turned out there was a faulty batch that had been produced. Shame on you, Activision. I finally came home with this working copy and it loaded the first time. Now I'm mind blown to say that David Crane has become a friend of the channel since then. And he even went as far as to apologize for that incident on Christmas day. But I did think it might be fun when we get the desk set up, being Christmas, to actually load up Ghostbusters on that tape deck in the right position this time, wherever it's gonna end up on this. So now you can watch his shipping journey Remarkably very similar to the journey that my kit car took uh, very recently, if you saw that video. And it is bizarre to think when I was 12, would I have ever imagined that my desk that I was playing Ghostbusters on would be traveling through the Panama Canal <laughs> one day. Very strange. So the big question, did it make it to me? Well, yes, it did. It's been sitting there the whole time. <laughs> Where those voices come from? Very strange. So now let's get this monstrosity out of here 
and put the beautiful original I still can't believe it. Sorry, miles away. Right, let's get on with recreating my childhood Commodore 64 setup the right way around this time. I'm giving it a bit of a clean just to protect it with some wax but uh, some things I, I really don't want to clean off is that a heart I drew they're all little moments in my childhood it's very special to have it here 5,000 miles away W or what's on his bottom <laughs> I don't know but perhaps a marking from the original shop I don't know what W could stand for perhaps Appreciate you away. The, the W bit anyway it's very likely in fact I can guarantee I had PCBs on here because when I modified this and put this Australian case on my Commodore 64, I would have had to open it up and expose the motherboard. And you can get great quality PCBs just like this, including clones of the Commodore 64 motherboard, starting at just five bucks. Because as we all know, PCB stands for Perifractic's Childhood Bedroom Setup. PCB's way. way. But as I put this back, I do want to thank PCB Way because without their support, projects like this, you know, shipping a desk across the world, just wouldn't be possible. Thank you guys. Now we have to think backwards with everything and let's start setting up the desk. This is quite a moment. That has not been on there for over 35 years. This is where I remember that, that ill-fated day happening. What a thing reuniting us never thought I'd be able to go back and uh, revisit those memories for real. I'm actually seeing it through my, my own eyes now. Oh, on with the show. And again, this now makes sense. That's exactly where I remember having the Accelerator Plus, plus this drive. Funny story, actually, same thing happened with that. I got not one faulty one from Evesham Micros, but two faulty ones and the light would just flash or do the wrong thing and uh, finally got a third one that worked perfectly and then it was really good because there had to have been space for this and then maybe I'm imagining it but I do kind of see a ring for that sucker there and another one is there reunited And for this, my original WH Smith data set deck care kit. Still with liquid in the bottle. Just alcohol, never drank it as a kid. Oops.
but it all feels a bit tidy, doesn't it? So let's start to introduce some of the things I shipped over. This was my... <laughs> did I hide his phone number? This was my address book. I do wonder if Kate Beckinsale's in here. Oh, sadly not. You know, I feel like I might have used these little uh, compartments here. This was my Swiss Army knife from my Boy Scouts days. That is probably the exact screwdriver I used to unscrew my Commodore 64 case. And now it can sit on the case. More Ghostbusters memorabilia. Ghostbuster of the year. Was it me? No, it was Winston. And this Tandy CB guide would have come from here. Tandy in Richmond. That's the actual shop in 1981. This thing I loved. Check it out. Look, I've put a, uh, oh, Tansoft Auric 1. Gosh, I'd, I never had an Auric 1, but I did have the badge, apparently. But look, I'll put this in here, right? Check it out. Abra Cadabra. Here she be way. Wow, amazing. And if you don't know how it works, I won't give you any clues here. But forget Boy Scouts, Swiss Army Knives. What about this? I don't know why I had such a lethal wi wife, <laughs> Freudian slip, knife, uh, probably during my Rambo days. I had the video game for the Commodore as well. Keep that in a drawer. It's probably where it did live actually. And a mouth organ that I remember owning since I was probably five. Does it still work? Yes. And this, I don't know what level was, but this is where I kept all my photos and Polaroids and such like. And there's Piper Fractic. Don't drink and drive, you'll spill it. <laughs> she was a good girl though. And I had a wonderful habit of uh, labeling photos. Bike. Jokes aside though, this hasn't been in here for again, 35 years. Thank you guys for giving me the possibility to make a video that hopefully you enjoy. But that, no, oh, it's just very special to me. And that dog thing made me think, you know, these, these probably still have the scent of Piper. She would have been sniffing them and playing with things and she was always in my room. <laughs> Never been to Boston. I think my dad might have bought that back from a business trip. Classic. And for some reason, the Lego motor. Keep that in there. And lo and behold, Puppy Fractic is really interested in this. She, it may just be the straw, but I think straw holds a lot more sense. I can't really put it into words on camera how it feels that she could be sniffing the doggo that I had when I was 12 and who broke my heart when she died. Now, in case you ever doubted it, I was a huge Star Wars fan, even as a kid. And this is my fan club. Uh, I even got my member number there. Don't copy that, will you? But look at this, a letter from Lucasfilm, from LucasArts, actually, in January 1993, saying sadly they won't be making X-Wing for the Amiga. <laughs> That's what was occupying my mind when I was 20. But how amazing as this fan, Livia McKinn, talks about you know, understanding how I feel. Four years later, I was on the set of Star Wars Episode One. Wow. <laughs> this should probably go in here, shouldn't it? Along with an issue of Dandy. And if you'd like to be a dandy and continue joining me on this journey of exploring some of the items I shipped over, you can do so now with the bonus footage at Retro Recipes Power Up over at patreon.com slash perifractic. And this, guys, is my actual diary. Goodness. Went to Wendy's, James lost one pound to me, but I let him off.
can just text James. Mate, I'm a little short of cash, so I'm going to have to hold you to that one pound you owe me, please. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> oh, yeah. These were little um, funny comedy bits we used to make called Now Buddy's Perfect. <laughs> Interestingly, here I reference the computer desk. That could have actually been that one for the Apple IIe. I'm not sure. May the 3rd, the day I finally won impossible mission for the Commodore 64. To celebrate... I arranged the rest of the computer. And there's a radioactive cloud over England. Ah, well, as this is an any year diary, we didn't know the year, but that would have been Chernobyl, wouldn't it? 1986, so I was 13. Wow. And I ordered Spin Dizzy and got Zap 64, issue 14. Well, I can't find 14, but 13 has this cover. And issue 13 of the A5 new ones It's the first one that I was the editor of Zap64 for. So you know what? We'll tie the past and the future together a little. Put them together in there. A little message from my past self to my future self. Or from my future to my past. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I do kind of feel that these timelines are happening in synchronicity and parallel, that like they're always happening and always will be happening. That is, of course, a theory of quantum mechanics. Bill for Commodore repairs, 56 pounds. Wonder if it was Ray Carlson. And I received Spin Dizzy. That was quick, wasn't it? Ta da! That's even quicker. Oh. Went to the Commodore Computer Show for a day. If you were there in 1986, let me know. I want a sound expander. I think I did get it, but I also found this the Sampler 64. The car wouldn't start, so I hired a nice lover. Oh, we hired a rover, sorry. <laughs> I love this. Watched the Street Hawk movie and got a catapult. A, great series, Street Hawk. And B, where is that uh, catapult, you ask me? Here he is, the actual one. Bit broke now, but uh, we'll fix it one day. This is starting to look more like my desk actually looked now. Look at this. Worked out the Amstrad computer. That's the PCW. Very good. Obviously liked it. Got my own disc. Wait there. And that's it. That's the actual disc. Logo script. Got my own disc. Still works too. This is astonishing. I wasn't expecting this. Huge catapult, which is Brill. Sorted out CPM disc. <laughs> That's me, uh, illustration of sorting it out. Oh look, the moment immortalised. Slingshot broke. Squirted coke. Slingshot broke. Squirted coke. Got a new catapult. Oh, so that was the new one, actually. I'm going to get my case changed at the weekend because of busted lock. Here is that actual case. As you can see, the lock now works. Got my Commodore 64 to go stereo. Look, wrote English prep on Amstrad. I wonder if we can find it, because I actually gave the file name. Homework triple zero. So we press F1 for disk change. There it goes. <laughs> That'd have been too much to ask, wouldn't it? But I do have my Commodore 64 high scores. Tell me if you beat any of these. The day I got my Rally Maverick bike. I love that thing. Um, <clears throat> never mind. Wow, July 24th, I got the Max Hedron book, which if you watched that original video, this is the cover of it. Yes. And who would have thought, as we record this, there is a new Max Hedrum series being made by HBO right now, starring Matt Frewer again. Oh, this is handy, because I wanted to know what boombox we had. Sharp GF780. Awesome. Uh, this is uh, weird. I was talking to a lady practic about this yesterday. Um, I swallowed the top of a hard candy lollipop intentionally 
but it got a little bit stuck for like one second. <laughs> Mum thought I'd swallowed the stick as well. How weird, I literally was talking about that yesterday. Wow, this really was the year, wasn't it? This is when I did this Mac paint artwork. They're so good, we've sent them to a magazine. Well, the Mac is just over there. Happy Christmas, everybody. And using this handy device, I can go to Mac Paint. Christmas though, so I should probably add some snow. Yeah, much better. Ordered an Amstrad light pen. Here it is. In the electric studio. <laughs> this is when I became obsessed with the little computer people. Apparently I named mine Adam. He was the first man after all. Oh no, post office said the light pen went to the wrong address. Got it in the end, I know that much. Recorded Rambo First Blood. Well, this was a good day. I watched not only Airwolf, but also Blue Thunder and Moonlighting. Little did I know I'd meet Bruce Willis at a premiere. Uh, it was a few years ago, Red 2. And he was standing on his own in the corner. It was, it was kind of surreal. He kind of locked eyes and I wandered over, introduced myself. I feel like I talked at him, but he really didn't say much back. But with his recent diagnosis, that really explained a lot. And um, yeah, thoughts are with you and your family, Bruce. Thanks for all the good times. And that seems to be where I got bored of writing a diary. But how amazing that I did that. Of all the years, of any year, it was 1986. My most memorable by far. Ah, oh, awesome. Okay, I've got too much stuff now. And I wanted to end this segment on a high because this, somehow I never opened it, but it is an ET, the extraterrestrial school kit. I do wonder if my parents probably told me you know, it'll be worth some money one day. I'm guessing in this kind of condition though, sadly, probably, well, one pound. The eraser, the ruler, erasing, amazing. Well, if anything should go at the top drawer of a desk, it's a school kit. Keep that in there. Well, now what I want to do is just use this. So let's pull up a seat and get ready. Ghostbusters! <laughs> hey, here we are. It's a lovely toasty Christmas night. Uh, I've got the fireplace roaring. Bob Ross is celebrating our happy Christmas trees. And you are watching the Bob Ross of retro computing, according to some people. But enough about Bob Ross. It's time for Ghost Bust. That's probably the worst link I've ever come up with off the top of my head. Very Alan Partridge, though. Uh, but here we are. <sighs> now, I just need to center myself because there's some very specific memories here that are etched into my brain. But the main one is just pressing play over and over and over and reloading, reloading on this data set. And in my memories, I was here. I was hunched over this very image. The, yeah, the TV. I, 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 this is like I'm having an out of body experience right now. So there's an interesting thing. Um, when I did the TV repair video of this TV, I asked you guys if you'd be interested in me doing a video about whether we could actually time travel back to those mem memories that we all have, ones like I have about this, you have ones about something else, that you just love to go back in time and just kind of watch yourself through the window, <laughs> not, not in a creepy way. So I did look into it. There is one theory, very briefly, it is that if you sent a space rocket faster than light, out into thousands of miles away from Earth, turned it around with a massive telescope and looked back, 
the light wouldn't have hit where the spaceship is yet because it went faster than light and it could turn around and look back at those things happening. And if you happened to be standing, sitting by a window, as I was when this happened, in theory, with the right angle, you could look back through the window with that telescope. Sadly, the lens of the telescope would need to be larger than the galaxy itself. <laughs> I did look into it quite a lot. I also used chat GPT to help me brainstorm it. So I do think that these kind of recreations are the, are the only way physically we would ever be able to look back. We have got Ghostbusters right here. I'm going to go back to being that 12 year old kid again. Here we go. Main. That's right. So this would have been after opening presents, probably while the other people were cooking lunch downstairs. I would have run back up to my bedroom. This exact desk. This actual TV. And there are those stripes. Thirty-nine years ago, almost to the day, Activision presents Ghostbusters. Happy Christmas, everyone. Now these stripes, if you didn't know, are decompression stripes. They, they indicate the data passing through the tape into the computer. And different software houses had different ways of doing it, of presenting it. In a moment, you're going to see the end of the loading sequence. And it gave thicker flashes, a different pattern. And that's when the game was meant to start. Can you hear that hissing? That's the part of this I hadn't remembered. Come on, please work. Ghostbusters! <laughs> So you could press the space bar to make him sing. You ready? Well, luckily this time around there wasn't something strange going on in our neighborhood. Ghostbusters works. If there is something weird and it don't look good, it's probably perifractic in a terrible sweater. That's it. I have finished my project that I set out to do, which was play Ghostbusters on the original desk with the original TV, the original tape box, the original time of year, Christmas. I'm going to press F1 to get started. And until next time, it just remains for me to say, well, Christmas is all about sharing. If you like this video, please feel free to share it. And thanks for watching. Subscribe and support below. Merry Christmas and cheerio. One man can make a difference, Perry. Or one woman. Or dog. The Fractics. Lone curators in a vintage world. The world of retro recipes. Across the streams. <laughs> <laughs>